Hello YouTube. Today we're going to clean something. Um, I was asked to make a video that's uh, not so much about the detail strip, but more just proper maintenance. And so that's what we're going to do today. Uh, I took the, the PO9 out today uh, to the range and uh, put uh, about 100 rounds through it, not too much. Um, we're not going to completely disassemble, we're just going to show you how to do your normal day-to-day uh, -day maintenance. I say day to day because one of the questions I get asked a lot is how often do you have to clean your firearms? And um, not to sound too much like a Boy Scout, but it's the same as when the dentist, uh, when you ask the dentist, uh, do I have to clean, do I have to brush all of my teeth? And the answer is no, just the ones you want to keep. Uh, if you shot a firearm, you need to clean it that day. Um, if you don't, is it going to destroy it? No. But. Uh, it is going to make it very much harder to clean the next time. And if you don't clean it that time, you're making it harder each time. So every time you use the firearm, it gets hot. The parts that get hot tend to drive off the oil that's protecting them. Um, where there is oil and fouling uh, occurs, if you get it the same day, it'll wipe off. If you don't, then... Um, that you know, less oil is there, more fouling is there. When it heats up again, now you've lost some of that protective layer of oil, and you've got a layer of fouling right there. That carbon gets baked into the steel, and then you can you know throw oil over it. But uh, again, each time you shoot it, you're you're baking a layer of carbon on, and you can actually see this in really dirty guns as you go and you try and clean them. You'll find that you're pulling off one layer at a time. And often uh, having to scrape off the last layer with, uh, with something more than a little abrasive. So the, uh, the idea is that if you clean it every time, it will never be easier to clean than the day you fired it. And it will keep it from ever becoming hard to clean. So if you want to go years and years and years without having to do a total takedown to clean it, the, the number one way to get there is to do your maintenance each time you shoot it. It doesn't have to take a long time. Um, this video will take a little longer just because I could explain everything, but realistically, this is something you can do in 10 or 15 minutes, and it, it'll give you a gun that'll last forever. It'll also give you a gun that's never going to malfunction on you, and, and that's really what, what most of us kind of want. So I got you know the basic materials laid out here, uh, some cloth, some patches, um, I got a box of Q-tips over here. I love Q-tips for getting into places. These are cheap Q-tips. Um, I have pipe cleaners, also fantastic for getting into places. I also have aggressive pipe cleaners. So these are pipe cleaners that you can get anywhere, like a craft store. These ones, you go to the cigar shop, and these ones actually have brass bristles built into them. You can't see it, but if you grab one, you can feel it because they spike right into your flesh. But that's great for scraping away at, at areas, that, whereas these ones are just all soft and fuzzy. Um, and you'll need uh, some sort of gun oil. Uh, this is actually full of uh, M-Pro, I think. Uh, it's chilly down here, so it's a little uh, thick, but it's a, lot of, it's a decent oil. And I don't sure. Normally, I use hoppies today. What I've got locally here is Ed's Red from Brownells. Uh, it's fine. Hoppies is the way to go for your day to day stuff. Um, it's just a great all around solvent. This has got some of the same stuff in it, uh, uh, kerosene being the primary ingredient in hops. This also has um, acetone and. Uh, mineral spirits in it so it's a it's a little more aggressive um uh what i would sorry say normally though is um it doesn't really matter you want a solvent and hops is just the go-to solvent uh if you haven't let your gun become incredibly dirty then it's going to take care of it 100 percent when it comes to oil don't go crazy break free it's good enough for tank treads it's good enough for your gun it's going to do a good job don't go putting a bunch of grease on a pistol pistols aren't made to run with grease they're made to run with lightweight oils uh, no matter how much somebody tries to sell you that fancy grease um that's not what the people who made the gun had in mind when they built it and uh they know what they're doing 
So, um, let's get started. The first thing you have to do is field strip. Now, obviously, I can't take you through the field strip of every gun in the universe, um, but, uh, you know, number one thing is make sure that your gun is unloaded and, em you know, empty, nothing in the chamber, no magazine, so there's no source of feed, and no ammunition in the cleaning area. That's just the, the rule of the road. And... This is designed to field strip by pulling the slide back just a little bit in this case and popping that pin out with a magazine. And then the oops, frame and slide will separate. So most of our cleaning is going to be up here in the slide, uh, but since we've got them apart, I'm just going to take our cloth. And we're going to go over the frame and all the parts that uh, can get dirty. Now, what that's going to be is the rail system. Wherever the rails integrate with the with the slide, there'll be you know some oil that's transferred around. But mainly, if you think about where the slide the slide is closed and where the chamber is, as rounds are extracted from the chamber, there is still powder burning coming back from the from the blast, and that gets in here, and it doesn't go real far. Um, at first, if you don't clean it out, it starts to work its way further and further down. So with just a clean cloth, you come in here and you wipe. And you just wipe every surface that you can get to. And you don't got to come in here with a bunch of oil. You don't spray stuff inside here unless you've really got a plan and know what you're doing. You're just wiping off that, that fouling. And there's not going to be a ton of it. And it's going to come off really easy if you keep your guns clean. It's only hard to clean a gun if you don't do this every time. So that's the major message. Um, I will give you some tips on what to do if you have neglected it. Uh, the number one thing is don't try and fix it all at once unless you really have a half a day to spend with that firearm for some reason and uh, nothing better to do with your time. Uh, don't try and bring a gun back from the... Uh, state of completely filthy to the state of crystal clean in, in one setting. And the reason is, is that your solvents and your oils all have two mechanisms of action. Um, well, one, they're, they're all solvents, even if they're oils, they have, they are organic solvents. They are going to, uh, pick up carbon and, and old oil and all that good stuff. Um, but uh, part of that is just because they are a liquid, which these things tend to be soluble in. But then part of it is chemical. The longer you let them sit together, the more they will just uh, soften up the harder deposits. So um, what you want to do is take off everything you can get easily um, on pass one and then leave it oily or, or uh, with solvent on it uh, overnight. And then come hit it the next day. And a lot of that stuff that was going to go nowhere on day one, you'll find will come off just as easy as some of the loose fouling did. So now as you see, this Q-tip isn't coming out wildly filthy. Like I said, only 100 rounds through it. So there just wasn't that much to accumulate. But I'm going over everywhere that uh, where fouling is and or what can accumulate so even if i can't see it you know i know that the general areas are there the parts where there's corners that are just hard to get into that's where i'm hitting it with the q-tip everything else that i'm going to pick up i'm going to be able to pick up uh, with the cloth so again just in and out of the magwell uh, brush along in there um, along with the rail scale now, over time, you'll see the mechanism back here starting to get, you know, funkier and funkier, and that's okay. Eventually, it'll get to the point where you can, you know, make the call to do that total disassemble and, uh, you know, with the help of other YouTube videos on my own channel or others. Um, don't be afraid of it. Just have the right tools, and uh, it's really not that bad. And when you're doing that, you have every piece complete in your hand, and you can, of course, restore it to factory shine uh, all the way down to the bone and back up. So the other place that we're going to have some fouling accumulated is uh, towards the end of the firearm. Um, again, as the bullets leave in the barrel, uh, that leftover powder 
is coming out and looking for anything you know to stick to and so this is another place to, to pay attention every time and of course this is almost completely cosmetic because uh, it's just polymer and it's not moving parts of the polymer but it's also um, a good sign of neglect if you see a gun and the end of it is got you know white and gray on it and uh, you know scratches in the white and gray and that tells you somebody's never really cleaned it because it's just an easy thing to do while you're while you're cleaning it and there's no reason that you wouldn't do it so always you know make the end all sparkly and um, as far as the rest of the inside goes that's it there's nothing else you can get to um, uh, if you want to, you can run the, uh, the cloth all the way through the magazine well and uh, do a little you know, back and forth scrubbing. Uh, be careful when you do this on the back side to make sure you're not grabbing any springs and knocking them out. But you can pull against all the sides, top and bottom, and just uh, towel this whole thing out. And that gets everything that it can out of the magwell. So that's your frame. There's no, there's nothing else to it. Over time, your fingerprints and skin will build up in all the cracks and and all the nice textured grip. Uh, a toothbrush, soft bristled toothbrush. You can buy them for two bucks from Brownells, and they come with a regular toothbrush end and then a, a single row of bristles on the other end, which is handy for getting into small places. But you can also just go buy, you know, kids' toothbrushes. You know, 10 packs for a couple dollars at any uh, drugstore. It doesn't have to be expensive. And, uh, you know, toothbrush is a toothbrush. Um, so, yeah, you can do that. Um, as a general rule on polymers, your basic solvents, like, um, like hops, are going to be good for anything. Anything outside of hops, you got to start to be careful. Um, especially in this case, like this, this is Ed's, Ed's has acetone in it. Acetone and plastic and rubber things don't always get along. So I wouldn't use this on my polymer frame. Probably wouldn't hurt it, but I have no reason to take that risk. Remember that, you know, acetone on metal is going to dry it out, which is fine as long as you're going to put oil on it afterwards. But anything you put on polymer, you really want to make sure is just non-reactive. So unless you had some burning desire to test it heavily first, uh, you really didn't, wouldn't want to. Now, kerosene and polymer, they get along just fine. You could leave this in kerosene for a year, come back, it would, wouldn't look any different. Uh, acetone, not quite as much of a guarantee there. Now, I'm getting these little fuzzies all over the place, so I'm just going to set most of these aside for a second. All right, so... Um, field stripping again, you're going to remove the spring system and lift the barrel out. Now here's where we see our first visible fouling. Our nice shiny reflective feed ramp is now actually a dull gray. Um, inside the chamber, you can see all manner of fouling at the, at the hood, fouling, and then all around the breech face itself, or excuse me, the chamber face itself, now fouling. And... Um, so based on where that is, we get a good sense of what the dirtiest part of the gun on the inside is going to be too. And that is anything from here back to here, uh, is going to be goopy. So <clears throat> now, uh, well, we're going to set, we're going to set the barrel for, for last. We're going to go over the frame because of the frame. You start off the same way that you, excuse me, the slide, not the frame, sorry. The slide, you start off the same way you did with the frame, which is you take your cloth and you get in there and you just rub out anything where you can see the fouling. So there was a whole bunch of fouling right there. It's gray instead of shiny black, so that's how you know it's fouling. Um, this is normal. These are streaks of brass that is because as it strips around off the chamber, the next round comes up and drags along here. You're going to get them on every gun. And uh, you can use um, solvents that actually have copper remover, and they will uh, reduce that, that brass, but it's not hurting anything. Um, so really, your goal is to just come in here uh, 
and get everything you can out with just the cloth. We're not no solvent at this point yet. We're just you don't if you if you dive if you dove right in with solvent, you'd just be spreading the very loose stuff all around out, out of the gate. And that just makes you know the first steps of cleaning all that messier and it wastes you know solvent that you don't really need to use so if you get you know the majority of this stuff off with just a tiny bit of of elbow grease and not a not a lot either you know um we just know the places that are going to be fouled so all around the chamber i'm just going to take my cloth and rub a dub dub now, one of the most important places, since we're not going to be taking it apart, is to always get under the extractor claw. So you come in here, you take uh, a patch or your, or your cloth, and you take the edge of it, and you get right up under there, right up close and personal, so that you're definitely under that claw. You're against the breech face, and you know, then you really want to you know, back and forth rub that guy really get it in there and you'll see no matter how clean you thought it was you will always get stuff out from that claw that claw does a lot of work and in order to do its work it's got to be clean so anywhere around that claw you can get to get to it and the other places that fouling builds up here on the on the breech face um, is is an, a really important one to deal with Excuse me. Um, almost all breech faces are cut in so that they are actually almost perfect 90 degree angles. There's usually a cutout for helping things feed on one side and obviously a cutout for the extractor on the other. But this edge here, um, where the, this 90 degree angle, where the breech face itself meets that, that wall, which is actually a stabilization wall for the back of the round so it can't move left and right. Um, along that line where I'm rubbing the exacto knife, that is always going to get dirty. And if you don't get in there and clean it out, it will get, uh, it'll start to just get um, more and more dirty to the point where you actually do start to have some problems. And those problems will be that they'll start to, Im that as the dirt builds up, it'll, it'll start to interfere with how far back the round can seat. And if the round is no longer all the way at the breech face, the firing pin is going to have a harder time getting there. It's not going to lock upright. All manner of other problems. Um, and all of that. So, now that we've said that, I'm going to go in here and take the clean side of my Q-tip. And I am going to put a little solvent on it. And we're going to do the breach face. Now, when I'm doing this, because I'm not going to be taking anything apart for this time, I don't want to get anything in the firing pin hole. Uh, the firing pin uh, chamber is, um, on, on most striker fired guns anyway, and even on a lot of firing pin guns, uh, that's designed to run dry. Some of them have a little oil in the chamber. Some don't, like locks don't. Actually, almost all strikered fires. Are, are, are a zero and everything else is at best a light, light, light coat of oil in there. And so the idea is we don't want to put anything in there that we don't have to. So I'm going to avoid the firing pin hole itself and just clean around it. Now again, you know, I'm putting this on and I'm rubbing, but uh, I, I'm going to give it time for the, for the chemistry to do its job. So everywhere that I just, you know, did the cloth with, I'm going to come over here again and do with a little bit of the solvent. I don't need to hose down the whole gun. There's no need for it. The whole thing's not dirty. Now we did see fouling in here. That was the first stuff that we took off. And uh, obviously along there where it's been rubbing. Now we don't want to go all the way back here unless this is actually dirty. Back here it's not really dirty. And if we go back here then we'll be getting solvent again in that firing pin safety where we don't need it. We're not cleaning anything in there, so there's no need to get solvent in there. So that's 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 one of the harder things to internalize, but the more important thing about doing a good job cleaning is uh, you know, don't clean the parts that, that aren't dirty. Now, I'm spending a lot of time in here on these rails, because this, uh, on, the, on the inside, rather, these cuts. This is the cut for the 
uh, ejector to come and then this is just the mechanism for the, the firing pin safety uh, but they do collect a lot of fouling especially against this raised middle bit which is where again that's what strips rounds out of the magazine and that does tend to pick up uh, and it's a little hard to see it sometimes it's also on a lot of guns too narrow for you to actually see that's where even q-tips can't get in and pipe cleaners come to the rescue so what I like to do with pipe cleaners is to bend them like that make a little loop and then basically square it off and flatten it and bend it out 90 degrees so now we have something which we can still manipulate up on top like this nice and easily but it can go down in anything it's already picking up goop that even the q-tip couldn't get so that's going to get into our corners really well back in here the other place this can get that nothing else can get adequately is the rails and the rails i tend to say always clean out the rails you should have had a light coat of oil on them take that light coat of oil off with the solvent along with anything that the oil picked up along the way uh, which will be fouling so that is all stuff that just got picked up uh, by the rails because they had a light coat of oil and oil as well as lubricating attracts fouling so we're going to just rub the solvent in there all along the rails that's getting in and out and uh, since these rail on the inside of the gun we're going to go ahead and get the bottoms of them too and uh, bend up another section Retire the first one. Do, 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 do. And uh, do one more pass here. Just to get all that stuff up. Same on the other side. Okay, set him aside. Back to your towel. Now I use painter's cloths and I get them at Home Depot. And um, to be honest, I kind of buy the expensive ones they if i can get them uh when they have premium wiping cloths uh that's the ones i like to get first they're cut into rectangles they're perfect so they come out of large consistent bolts um and they're all the same thickness they're all the same material they're the same on both sides and you can tell what you're getting you get a nice thick weave with not a lot of dust um so it's basically t-shirt material it's a jersey but not super fuzzy the next grade down is uh, still premium, but not as premium and that they are not rectangular and they're just shoved in the box. That's why they're all wrinkly. They could be in any shape in the world. They're remnants at the end of, of the processing of whatever textile was, whatever kinds of clothing was being made out of, out of it. But the idea is that, you, you know, they'll be pure cotton. They'll be clean. You know, people who use red shop towels will find that suddenly their fingers, their gun, and everything else gets dyed bright red. That's really obnoxious. And again, we're coming in here to remove the solvent that we just put on. The solvent picked up all the oil and all the dirt, and now we're picking up the solvent to get all that stuff away from the firearm. So get it in there good I just fold up a little bit you can use patches for this as well you just want to fold up enough so that you can stuff it all the way into the rail make sure you get good contact in there and uh, you know rotate to clean parts of the cloth as it gets dirty and again on the inside where we went with the q-tip Our ejector path along the firing pin safety path and then on the inside all around the chamber where we cleaned up so basically everywhere that we put solvent on we're taking the solvent off and uh, making sure that we don't leave any on the gun. So it should come out pretty sparkling clean at this point. 
Breach face extra good. And again, special attention underneath the extractor claw. That's, that's a, can't stress how important that is. And basically you're looking to make sure there's no liquid left behind. If you don't see any liquid left behind, then you haven't left any solvent. And uh, you did it good. So we'll come back to that and put oil on it uh, before we assemble it. But we're going to talk about our barrel now um, because barrel uh, gets all sorts of special attention just because uh, it's the dirtiest part. Um, every shot leaves an awful lot behind. Uh, so um, the crown, the crown is always going to be dirty. So it's very easy to see that. Stuff your finger in there, rub it around. You get a nice big ring around the finger. Now, if you have a good light and you poke down in there, you probably also see, there it is, some copper fouling. I hope the camera can pick that up. Um, <laughs> hard to tell. Uh, but the idea is that lead, copper, and carbon are all in your barrel and in pretty thick quantities, no matter how little shooting you do. Uh, if you shot, you know, one round, one jacketed round, you're going to have all three materials in there. But again, we're starting with just the cloth because, uh, you know, we don't need to make the whole house reek of solvent and, and go through bottle after bottle. Um, if it can come off by just wiping it off, then that's where we want to start. Now, we're going to cover it with solvent in a minute, but the idea is if we just did it, if we hit it with the solvent first, then really what we'd be doing is quickly floating it all into the solvent and then spreading it deeper inside. And so this is just a way to, to, to get to those uh, easy to get spots, get a good chunk of the sol of the uh, fouling out. Um, and, uh, and get us a, a good start before we actually go in there with the, uh, whoops, the breaking of the lighting with the harsh chemicals. Um, so I, again, places where it's going to build up that you don't expect along here, where the barrel and the, uh, and the slide actually lock up at the top. There's always some in there, anywhere where there's a change in diameter of the barrel, uh, here on the bottom, that's places that fouling loves to build up. This has actually got a big sticky chunk right here on the bottom. So, now that's about all I'm, I'm getting off with that. So, uh, before I just go diving in with the normal, you know, uh, cleaning tools with my jag and my brush, I like to clean my chambers uh, separately. So again, everywhere on the outside that I just got, the feed ramp, you know, we're going to pick up any residual fouling that uh, didn't come off with just... Uh, that dry cloth and a little elbow grease. So we're going to put our solvent on the, all those faces, brush up what we can, and then focus on the chamber. So it's easy to see when the uh, <clears throat> when the ramp is is clear because most ramps are polished these days. Um, doesn't really help, but it makes people happy to have a polished ramp. So the company started doing it. Um, what we do, what we want to do, is the is the chamber itself. And this makes um, way more of a big deal than people realize. Uh, feeding problems, um, many, many feeding problems simply track back to a dirty chamber. And it's the part of the chamber that most people don't even think about because they're paying attention to the ramp. And so they're looking at the bottom of the chamber. It's the top of the chamber. Not so much the hood, which has to be clean. That's this part that sticks out. But the top side of the chamber. Um, that's where, when a round is feeding in, it doesn't come gently sliding up and in. That's, that's all just a giant lie. That round is going to get knocked really hard, bounce once off the slide, off the feed ramp, bounce off the hood, bounce off that, bounce into the top of the chamber, and slam in. Usually it only makes, you know, one, two, three, boom, one, two, three, four, boom. And that's it. There's nothing smooth or graceful about it. It is a violent, fast-moving action. 
And so one of the places rounds can get stuck is in what they call the three point bind. So the, the breech face is pushing the round out of the magazine and, and forward, and it's gonna hit the feed ramp and the top of the chamber at the same time at one point. So you've got a point of contact here, a point of contact here, and then the back of the round has got one point of contact with the breech face moving it forward. If these angles line up just wrong and there's a lot of friction on that top surface, that'll actually stub the round out and stop. Whereas if the chamber is, is smooth up here, you're far more likely to have no problem and that round just sliding along the top of the chamber. But if the chamber gets dirty on top, that's what's gonna happen. It's gonna start to attract that three-point bind failure. So when we're cleaning it out in here, that's where we spend all of our little uh, extra time and effort here. We want the whole chamber to be clean and this is a good thing on new guns too to pay attention to if your gun has been shot for a while you'll never have a good appreciation of how clean the chamber could be if your gun is new it's a good thing to pay attention to because that's how you know when you're done cleaning you can always clean a gun to exactly how it looked when the factory shipped it to you but if you don't have a sense of what it looked like then then you're always going to be wondering was it really discolored? Were those marks always there? You know, is that a burn mark or was that from the factory? Is that dirt I can get off or is it just part of, you know, the coloration? And uh, if you don't have a baseline, it's really hard to get that. And it's often hard to convince people that their chamber can always be restored to, uh, if not a mirror polish, then at least a completely carbon free, uh, you know, shiny place and so um, now there's one other place that we're going to get manually before we just dig into it and if you don't have uh, an exacto knife or something equivalent then you, you just want to skip this step but basically um, one of the things I like to do is to get my exacto uh, knife go down to where I can feel the chamber end and the rifling begin to the end of the chamber and run the knife just around gently. You're not trying to dig into the steel. You're just gonna, a ring of carbon can build up right there and it can also, uh, it's essentially shortening your chamber when it does that. So you go around, uh, you know, once or twice like that and that's all, you're not digging in there. You're not, you know, carving away at it. You're not gonna, you don't wanna scratch anything up, but a once around to make sure that you're not letting carbon build up there. And now that I've gotten most of that off on the inside, pay more attention to those spots before where we had just dry wiped and then put a little solvent on. Uh, catch the locking area and the rail area back here. And that ah, chamber's looking pretty good at this point. Now we're, it's all gonna get cleaned again when we go through, but we're paying extra attention to the areas that we care about a little bit extra more. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So the other one here is the crown. So um, because our bristle bl brushes are not going to be putting as much uh, tension and, and scraping effort on the crown because it's wider than the rest of the barrel, we want to come in on the crown and focus on it and go all the way around and make sure that nothing is building up on the crown. If the crown gets built up, then the rounds don't fly straight because the gases have to leave uh, the barrel perfectly evenly on all sides of the bullet if they start to um, if one side is blocked off then the other side gets to outgas sooner than that side that sends your bullet tumbling it's basically blowing on the back of the bullet in one direction and uh, you're gonna start to have rounds that don't fly straight or take longer to stabilize and uh, either way your accuracy goes away now, we're not going to worry so much about the lands and grooves at this point. I'm really not trying to get deep in there. I'm really just trying to get it so I have enough contrast to see that I've gotten my crown uh, as clean as I can get it. So I'm going to come back in here with a cloth, dry it off, and make sure I can see any fouling left on the crown and that all of my crown is still even and nothing built up. I'm going to wipe this guy down just a little bit even though we're going to make him slimy again in a second. So, <clears throat> uh, cleaning, real cleaning. 
I'm going to be using a brass jag today. Um, as a general rule, avoid steel. You should only put a steel jag through a barrel if, or excuse me, a steel brush through a barrel if you absolutely know that you have to. Meaning it's definitely got so much fouling in the lands that, that nothing you have done, you, you've ruined two other brass brushes and gotten nowhere. And when you put steel through, be really careful. Never change direction, for the love of God. It'll ruin a brass brush if you do it. But if you do it with a steel brush, it'll also mangle your barrel. Um, the other thing I say is these. Jags are great. You can get by with a little loop. Uh, most guns get shipped with uh, some uh, equivalent of it. And these are fine if you know how to use them. Um, Basically, you're going to come in with your cloth and fold it like a triangle. Uh, start it through the loop. Whoops. And pull it all the way through. Pull it through the loop and, uh, and come and fold it over the outside. So that, that's the idea is that you get it started. Um, but the patch itself is, is folded over the outside to push through. So that's how you use these if you want to. I, I don't like them because jags are basically superior in essentially every way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this guy with a good bit of solvent on him. Because before we put a brush through our barrel, our barrel has to be wet. If you put a, a dry brush through your barrel, you're just shortening its lifespan for for no good reason and i'm going to use the jag because the jag is just better so with my jag i'm going to pierce the center of the patch and I'm just line it up and i'm just going to shove it through my barrel now i i will let it tw twist so i'm not holding this rid woof there goes my lady and i'm not holding this rigidly i'm letting it rotate as i push it through it will track in the lands and grooves a little bit on its own, and that's fine. We want to let it do that whenever it's willing to. And so that's the fouling that it gets off just by being rubbed through there once. Now, we're done with this patch. You don't run patches through a second time. Don't turn them over and run them through. Uh, patches are single-use single, single use entities. So I'm going to just wipe it off on the outside because it's dripping all over my table. And I'm going to switch my jag out for my brush. <clears throat> and so really what we've done is we've made the inside of that wet and we've gotten off anything that was loose enough that it, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't really hanging on there. Now since this is a fixed handle end, it doesn't have the T handle that lets it rotate, I always only want to screw my uh, brush in halfway because we want the brush to be able to track in the lands and the grooves as we go in and out and let the brush freely spin. If I torque it all the way down, then I will be not tracking in the lands and grooves, but brushing across them, which doesn't really help you get it clean at all. So <clears throat> never put a dirty brush in there if you don't have to, but since this is clean, and remember, don't do this on the kitchen table. When that comes out, it sends a spray everywhere. And all the way through, never change direction in the middle. These, these bristles are longer than the barrel. As you go in through one direction, they will all get pushed back a little bit, but then spring to their original position. Likewise, when I come back, they're all going to spring back again to the original position. If I try to change in the middle when they're all bent in one direction and I try and suddenly bend them the other way, they got nowhere to bend. And instead they just get permanently bent. So they don't flex anymore, I guess I should say. They actually then at that point bend. So what you want to do here is run this through somewhere six to 12 passes. Is, uh, tends to be a nice easy magic number. And again, barrel was wet and brush was wet before they went in. Never put a dry brush into a barrel. Never put a brush into a dry barrel. Wet brush, wet barrel. So, take this guy out. Come down. And now we're going to see what we got. Now, there's two school of thoughts on the next thing to do here. Some people say... All right, run a dry patch through now and let it grab everything it can. I like to cheat a little bit and run one more wet patch through and then run a dry patch through. 
this is where you get into you know personal preference and unless you had you know 50 guns lined up that had all been shot the exact same number of times and we're doing some sort of scientific experiment then somebody could probably make an official ruling but frankly <clears throat> i think that the wet patch picks up the most goop on this pass and again i try and make it that the other thing you can do with a wet patch is move it slower the dry patch tends to go in fits and starts whereas the wet path patch tends to go through more easily look it even cleans your hands of course that's acetone and kerosene so I smell delightful when I'm done with this. Um, all right, now I dry it off, and I'm going to run a dry patch through. And this will give us a real sense of whether we're done or we got a lot more to do. And so that's going to pick up any remaining solvent and any remaining fouling. And what we're going to see is that came out pretty darn clean. So, <clears throat> if it didn't, we would just repeat. We would take another wet patch, wet it up, take the brush, get it wet, 6 to 12 strokes back and forth. Depending on the solvent, you can let it sit in there for, for 15 minutes, repeat the process again, and uh, <clears throat> just keep doing it until you're happy with it. Now, the important most important thing I would say in this is um, is not to, not to go crazy. Again, uh, if you do this regularly, you know you're only gonna have to do this once. It's all the fouling is gonna come out in that first pass. Use a total of one, two, three, four patches, two Q-tips, and a pipe cleaner. So as a net of cleaning supplies, you know, not that bad. Um, so what we want to do now is uh, towel off all the other parts uh, because they would have gotten some spray. And then we want to take an assessment of how well we've done. And we want to be harsh on ourselves because it's our gun and, you know, there's nobody we're going to ever impress with this but ourselves. So I hold it up to a source of light. Now you can't see this, but I'm basically pointing it skyward and looking through the barrel. So we looking through the barrel but at a bright light source. If I tried to create this, I would possibly, you know, maybe you can see some lands and grooves, but usually they're probably too washed out or too bright. But the idea is your eyeball at a bright source of light, look through both ends and study the lands, the grooves and the chamber from both sides. And note that uh, anything you see in there can come out. Whether you got it out or not is a different question for whether it can come out. The dirtiest of barrels, so long as it's not actually corroded, can be made as clean as when it was new. So <clears throat> feel free to do another pass, or you can come on to the next step, which is uh, oil. Now, this is actually an interesting step because you've got some options here. So if you've got most everything coming out clean and you look through and you know, you know, the patches came out clean, but you looked through and you felt that there was still some stuff in there that just wasn't coming off, um, oil is, you know, your CLP oils are also designed to, to be used as cleaners. So they can be used for this task. So if you take a patch and you do exactly like we did with um, uh, with the solvent, but you're just doing it with oil. And so you oil up the patch. I'm gonna spread this around a little bit with my fingers. And I'm gonna run the oily patch through. And uh, now there's two states that this can leave us with. Um, one is we could leave it like this and be done. And at this point, um, I've got, I would always run one more clean patch through it. If I was happy with this and I said, yeah, there's hardly any fouling on that, I'm done. I would still run one clean patch through. That's not gonna get all the oil off, um, but you don't, you want to leave that one very last tiny bit of oil in there. 
because uh, you know you have to have a little bit of oil to protect the metal so um, before we make that decision though the other thing that's important to know is you know it does have a little fouling left in there if I let this sit for a couple hours and came back even more fouling than just came out now would come out on an oily patch because the oil gets uh, the oil protects the metal but the fouling when it's hot can get into the metal and get into the pores of the metal and it's really hard to get it out this brush is not brushing so, uh, anything out of the pores in the metal pores in the metal are very very much microscopic things so um, you really have to kind of let the chemical action actually have time to dissolve them and the oil is a good way to do that because it'll stay in place and so that's another thing that if you if you clean a gun to within an inch of its life put it away for six months and then run a clean patch through the barrel it should come out a little bit dirty because no matter how clean you got it that oil that was in the barrel for six months was doing its job too and will have dissolved all that remaining carbon out of the pores so uh you know never uh, really judge how how clean it is by one clean patch going through it if it's been sitting a while it could have been very well maintained and still come out pretty gunky looking on that first patch uh, so I, I am satisfied with this that's that's barely anything and so I'm gonna do like I said and take a clean patch and run one single clean patch just run it right through and uh, call it a day so now I've got a little bit of oil in there because I couldn't take it all off with just one patch and that's just enough to protect it but not enough to make it gummy so that when we go to shoot it there'd be some you know there's not buildup of oil in the lands and grooves it's just in there enough to protect them I'm cleaning the other piece of the gun simply because it's accessible and uh, I think we've cleaned everything. Uh, the um, the guide rods do get funky over time. Uh, I generally don't recommend messing with the guide rod to clean it until it gets really funky, and then um, you know toothbrush everything in between, or or feed a piece of cloth in like this, and, and uh, you know kind of jam it in there, and then you know run it through and rotate the whole the whole thing all the way spin it through so uh and when, but when you do that um when you're done be sure to get just a little bit of oil back on the shaft itself uh even in these these plastic guide rods uh it still helps to have just a tad i need to refill my oiler of oil in there and same on the other side. Not a ton, just what was you know sticking to my fingers. If this gets all goopy, it just attracts that much more fouling. And uh, now it's about lubrication and reassembly. So <clears throat> I'm gonna find the frame again. Um, in this case, we're not putting any of the lubrication in on the frame side for the rail system. In this gun, the rails are exposed completely on that side, so we'll do it there. Things that you can put oil on. You can always put a very, very tiny... See how I have a needle oiler? This is your best friend. You can put whatever kind of oil you like in it, but it's the quantity that you control that matters. So I don't, I don't ever want... I mean, a drop of oil that's a lot I mean a lot lot that is enough oil to lubricate everything on this firearm and then some so I'm just gonna soak that up with a q-tip for now set that aside for use in a minute so we use our needle oiler so that we don't have to put entire drops on so springs again that's too much for a spring I shouldn't see it pooled up there I just want enough so that it can can seat between the coils so that if there was any grit in there the in between the coils the oil would help move it to the outside of the coils where it would eventually fall off this spring again you know you could technically pull the same logic this is not a spring under a ton of tension 
What you don't want to do is just start hosing oil everywhere. Most of this is designed to be run dry on dry. Um, sear surfaces, hammer surfaces, none of those are really designed on this firearm to have uh, oil in them. You can always consult the, ma the manual and uh, pick up tips on anywhere where it suggests that you oil it. Um, you don't want anything to be perfectly dry. So if we had come in here with solvent, that would be a bigger problem. You know, when I put this together, there was a light layer of oil on it. That's still there. So I don't really need to replenish that unless I removed it. And since I didn't remove it, we're not going to do that. So we're going to focus our oil on uh, the slide itself. So there's a couple places that you want to oil. You put a little bit of oil right there and you spread it around uh, really well because this is going to cover um, where the top of the slide is moving the top of the barrel is moving once it unlocks and if you notice a little goopy in there that's okay uh, some of that's from my finger some of that's there realistically you don't have to do much more than you know about half this area doesn't really matter um, and then the rails themselves now there's a lot of different ways to do this some people like to say that you put a whole drop of oil up here at the top of the rail and then you hold it up and you just go to the races so you put more oil than you really should and then you wait and it's going to start dripping down and wait and wait and wait and eventually that drip would run all the way to the bottom where you would then soak it up with a q-tip now like I said, this oil is a little heavy, so it's going to take forever. So what we're going to do is the way I prefer to do it, which is, again, going back to my nice soft pipe cleaners. I'm going to take my pipe cleaner and get the pipe cleaner oily. And then I can just run the pipe cleaner through the rail. And that's it. That, that's as much as it needs. Other side. That is all the lubrication these things need now because of the design of this particular firearm i'm going to stick some on the outside of that lower rail because this gun the, the rails ride inside the frame and so this is actually technically a, a, a bearing surface as well kind of um and uh, that's it the only other place that if you could oil if you really want to is um, around where the muzzle locks. So where the end of the barrel comes through the frame, or slide, excuse me, uh, you can put a little oil in there. Um, the barrel itself, uh, where it needs to lock and unlock uh, with, the, with the slide and in the locking system itself now that's way more oil than you need so again i put it on that way so i could then come in and scoop it off with a clean q-tip and that's going to leave me with all the oil i need there the other places where you just want a trace of oil are along the rails which are the the flat bits on either side of wherever that locking mechanism is and again you want to make sure that and then all around that first place where it changes dimensions again and then what I like to do is take the excess oil that's on the q-tip and rub all of it off on the barrel itself and then with my fingers spread it the rest of the way around that's left a, a perfect coat of oil all along there um, but not you know visible and pooling and that's gonna make it so you know, when it's in the locked position we've got oil on both surfaces and when it's unlocked it's gonna have oil all the way along to give us a little more wear and tear on the finish of the barrel itself. So we put our gun back together at this point. So Racked it a bunch of times because now I'm transferring the oil that I put into the rails onto the in onto the frame side of the rails. So we rack it, function check it. So 
Rack the gun, pull the trigger, it should fire. This is a double single, pull the trigger again, it should fire. Pull the trigger and hold, rack the gun, it should stay back. Now I listen for my reset, and now I pull the trigger again to make sure my single action works. This gun has no safety, but it has a decocker, so we want to make sure the decocker works. So all those functions correctly, and uh, I know I'm good to go. Um, the last place is since we did just have oil in the rails, which we rubbed back and forth a bunch of times, a little oil will have accumulated on the back. So we wipe that off so we don't get a thumb full of it a little bit later. Um, if you have oil left on a finger or Q-tip or anything, it never hurts to just uh, put a touch on the back of the hammer itself. That'll help it cam just a little bit easier. And... Uh, Do that again now it's transferred onto the onto all the parts that it needs to cam against and at that point this gun is good to go i could put this gun away for six months even a year and not have to worry about it rusting or or having other problems if i knew i weren't going to touch it for six months i would actually swap out this regular grade oil for an actual heavier oil um Something that's not a CLP, something that's actually just labeled gun oil uh, and not cleaner lubricant protectant. Um, those are heavier weight oils and they stay put a little bit better and uh, they're, they're less volatile as well. I mean, CLPs are rarely volatile unless they're the spray can version. Uh, so they, they should stick around for a good long time, but should it be potentially years, <clears throat> a heavier oil will make it so that it doesn't really matter how those years are measured, whether they're in you know, two years, five years, decades, uh, or even 50 years. Um, if the heavy oil is on there, it can't rust. It's that simple. So that's cleaning your firearm. Uh, took a, through all the details this time, but <clears throat> realistically do it every time. It will only take a few minutes, a few materials, I think we used a total of six Q-tips by the time we were done, two pipe cleaners, um, and a uh, rag, and about six patches. And that was soup to nuts. Everything done, everything clean. Again, you can repeat the solvent in the barrel step, and you can also do a oil in the barrel with the brush if you, uh, if you want to as well. I always recommend doing what you can with solvent first, but if, uh, if you want to do one pass with oil at the end before you then just use oil to put the actual oil into the barrel, <clears throat> that's fine too. You'll get, a, you'll get a little bit more out than you will with just solvent. You get even more out if you leave the oil in there for a couple hours. <clears throat> um, and that's it. That's cleaning. If you got any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, hope you learned something. If you did, leave us a like. Thanks. Take care.